Greetings and welcome to Emerging Tech Talk. I'm your host, Dan York. And tonight, Monday, January 5th, 2009, I want to show you the new Skype 2.8 beta for Mac. Now, this is being announced right now out at the Showstoppers event in at Macworld in San Francisco, and it will be available for download tomorrow, uh, January 6th, uh, from somewhere on Skype's websites. And I'll put a link in the show notes once uh, it's available. Now, this version provides some new functionality for Mac OS X users, which is not yet on the Windows or Linux versions, although they say it will be later. It's got some screen sharing, some mood messages, which are kind of like Twitter, or it's turning the mood messages into something like Twitter more. And it's also got something called Skype Access. Now, I can't show you Skype Access, so I want to just talk about it for a moment. With this release, basically, Skype allows you to go to any Boingo Wi-Fi hotspot and be able to connect into the Boingo network using your Skype client or using the Skype Access component and paying on a per minute basis using your Skype credit. So you don't need a Boingo account, you don't need a uh, you don't need to pay any hourly or daily fees. Now I'm not a big Wi-Fi hotspot user even when traveling, but I could see the value in this for somebody who go, wants to just go into a hotspot, check their email or something and get off. This allows you to pay on a per minute basis and again, using your Skype credit. I don't know, not big for me, but I'm sure for some it will be. With that, I want to jump right into the demo and show you the other cool features. Here it is. So this is the 2.8 beta for Mac, and if you haven't been seen a Mac version of Skype before, uh, this is what it looks like. It has, on the left side, you're seeing all of my different chats that are here, both public chats as well as uh, private chats that are here. And there's this drawer on the left side, which allows you to go and flip between your chats very easily. You don't have to have all your chats in one window, but I choose to do so because I like to. On the right-hand side is the regular Skype window. Now at the top, if you're a Mac OS X user, you'll see that the icons have changed, and Skype has done this. So there are slightly different icons throughout. But I'm going to call another account just so that I can show you the screen sharing feature, which is the newest and coolest part of what's uh, available here. Now... I have the technical call info up because I like to look at that type of stuff. One of the first things for Mac users is that you'll notice that the start video icon is now in the upper left where it used to be in the lower left, which does take a little bit of getting used to. But I'm going to start sharing my video and you'll see me pop up there. I'm going to start the video on the other system as well, which will give you a two-dimensional look at me, which is highly exciting. But in any what case, I'm not going to dwell on the video. I'm going to do the share icon. It's a share screen and I have a choice of sharing a full screen or a selection. And in fact, I have two screens, so I could share one or the other, but I'm just going to display this one. And now what happens is my video that's being sent to the other end is a picture of my entire screen. So if I bring something in from off the screen, out of the screencast area, you can see this picture's coming in. And uh, there we go. Very exciting. Okay, I'm going to move it back out. But basically, it's showing my entire screen as it is. I'm going to stop sharing this, and now I'm going to go and share, it flips back to my video, and now I'm going to share my screen and share my selection. Now what happens is you can see is this little box that pops up, which says start sharing. So if I do this, again, what's happening is you can see in the lower left corner is that whatever I have in this box is going to be displayed as my video. So I could go over here, I could look at something that's going on, I'll get rid of my technical call info because I don't really need it, and I could move around in my list of contacts that are here, and you can see all this happening in real time. Now I can also go and expand this window. I can just simply drag it and make it bigger so that somebody can see more of what's happening in my area. I can pick this up, move it somewhere else on my screen, I'm going to move to my other screen, and now you'll see that it's showing a web page, which again, I can be moving through and moving back and forth. So basically, Skype's provided a very basic way to do screen sharing to be able to go and, and move this back and, and, uh, and provide that kind of sharing between people for collaboration, for technical support, whatever else you're looking for. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to hit stop sharing, and now it's going to flip back to my video. So that's the screen sharing component. Basically, they've created a video driver that lets you capture your screen and goes from there. I'm going to hang up the call and go from that. And switching back from screen sharing to the chat window, you'll notice that some of these chats have exclamation marks next to them. 
And what it is is Skype allows you to now set chats, set a priority on chat. So I'm going to give Jim Courtney, I'm going to set a priority of medium for Jim's chat. Now what's cool is I can come up here to the top of the chat window and I can say sort by priority. Notice I also have date or title. But now when I sort by priority, I'll see various different chats that are in various different priorities. And RJ is my boss, so the chat I have with him can be the highest priority. This chat is now that. I'll elevate another one, um, a chat around this show, and I will say I will set the priority to high. Now it's going to pop up there as well. So I have this ability to go and set um, chats by priority. Pretty cool feature. Removing one, if I didn't want to have Jim have a priority anymore on this, I'd just go back in there and say set priority to none. Or I could lower it, raise it, etc. So pretty neat feature that I found quite useful in there. You'll also notice down here at the bottom, there's a mood messages. Now, what this is showing you is all the mood messages of the people that you are um, in your contact list or that you're following. And we get into a bit of social networking stuff going on here, and I'll show you that in a minute. I, this is not enabled by default, but what I do is I go into Skype's preferences, and on the advanced page, I have something here that says enable mood message chat. And also you see enable Skype access. Well, once this happens, my mood messages are then shown from all the people in my, in my contact list. I can also set my mood message here. So I can type in here, um, recording a screencast about Skype. Now over here in my client, you'll see that it's also changed right here. And shh, it also goes out to Twitter, but I'll show you something about that in a separate blog post. Anyway, that's now gone out and in there. So I can watch these things. And looking over in the client, I can look and see, like Jim Courtney, I can go and I can click on his name and I can come down here and it says follow mood message. Now I can go and follow it or I cannot. So either way, it's basically I have the kind of following capability that I have in, say, a Twitter or a Facebook or something else like that where I've got this kind of capability. And I, quite frankly, I've gone and done that to several people because Skype also gives you the ability to go and put your um, iTunes playlist into your mood message, which then shows up in here. So I see a whole lot of things about what music people are listening to. But it's interesting anyway, a neat little feature they've got in there. I, I also have the ability to go and if I'm in a chat with Jim and I want to quickly add somebody, I can click on this and I can go and pull up, for instance, in this case, Phil Wolf. And then I can just go and very quickly add him into a chat. I could do this before by just dragging somebody over into a chat, but now I've got this nice little add button up on top of that. Another feature that it has is um, uh, inside of this, if I go into, into somebody's profile, I can go and look at Jim Courtney's profile, and there's now a notes area where I can write something um, about Jim in here. So I could say, uh, you know, writes for... Skype Journal uh, is a is a BlackBerry fan. Okay, whatever I want to do about Jim. Jim, this is my private notes, which are stored here on this system. Now, I don't know whether it's stored just on this version of the client. So if I had 2.8 running on another system, would it be stored there? Or is it just local like chat histories are? I'm thinking it's probably that, but I don't know. Uh, there's some other features. You can have large, larger profile pictures if you want now. They've also made it so that if uh, you get a contact request coming in, uh, it used to be that some people had offensive pictures. You know, if they were, well, you know, a naked woman or something like this and you didn't like that, you can now set it so that, um, actually it's or set by default, so that avatars or pictures of people who are contacting you are hidden by default. So... Those are kind of the main features. Again, chat management features, the screen sharing component, the ability to quickly add somebody, and then, of course, the Skype access component I talked about at the beginning. And so there you have Skype 2.8 beta for Mac OS X. I hope you find some of these features useful. I've certainly found the prioritizing message chats as well as the screen sharing to be quite useful at times. Uh, again, Skype indicates the beta should be out and available for download tomorrow, January 6, 2008. And nine. Thanks again. Until another show, you can find me at the address shown on the screen or you can email me at dyork at as well. Thanks for watching.